The goal of this video is to quickly summarize and show the main current capabilities of the capital planning solution. So what do we offer? We offer an integrated asset management solution that can bring data from different sources such as model, GIS, SCADA, work orders, uh, and provide actionable insights to the water utility, such as likelihood of failure analysis, consequence of failure analysis, risk analysis, asset performance, and planning. Let's go to a quick demo overview of the main capabilities. The capital planning solution can be used as standalone or integrated as an additional module of a broader operational digital twin solution called Watersight. If integrated within Watersight, it will appear as an, ad an additional module named capital planning that is divided into four main areas, likelihood of failure, consequence of failure, risk and planning. The end goal is to identify the priority as assets that need to be rehabilitated based on user-defined aspects or criteria that can account for risk and performance. The risk analysis is done by combining the likelihood of failure with the consequence of failure. So let's first look at how we handle the likelihood of failure. Because the main drivers for rehabilitation can be different from utility to utility, we offer a flexible and customizable solu solution that is flexible enough to adapt to any user need. In our capital planning solution, assets get prioritized based on a quantitative rank that goes from 0 to 100 and qualitative rank that goes from low to high. The aspects or criteria that are taken into consideration when calculating this rank are defined by the user based on the data that is available and imported into the solution. Here below we have an example of some of the aspects that can be created and included. And each one of these aspects can contribute to the final likelihood of failure. For example, specific materials are more prone to break than others. Older pipes usually tend to have more breaks than new pipes. Some type of soils um, can also induce more breaks than others, as well as high pressures or pressure changes. So I can also account for other factors like water losses. In this case, these water losses results are directly calculated within the water site application. Aspects can be created and scores for each asset can be calculated based on different methods. We can use, for example, the decision tree method, where a user uh, can employ flexible and customizable rules across multiple data sets. Um, another option uh, and more automated solution is to create, for creating aspects, is to take advantage of the data analytics um, to automatically come up with the conditions and scores for each um, aspect. After defining the aspects that can drive the likelihood of failure, the user can create what we call a cumulative that can combine several different aspects and give them different weights, as we know that some aspects may be more important or relevant than others. We can also see the results in a map, uh, where we can drill into a specific grade and to a specific score and see the, the specific pipes. We can also overlay the, this information of the priority pipes with other layers, uh, zones, streets, type of soils, bursts, and so on. And we can also export this information into an Excel. The consequence of failure analysis follows the exact same logic, but instead of being focused on the probability of failure, it is focused on the consequence of those failures and can include, for example, proximity to highways, critical customers impacted by the failures, potential flooding caused by a huge pipe break, repair costs or number of affected customers in general. After calculating the likelihood and the consequence, we can now assess the risk by combining the two together. Let's look at a specific risk scenario, for example, this one. The risk is calculated based on a risk matrix that is driven by the likelihood and the consequence of failure. The likelihood of failure and the consequence of failure considered for the risk scenario are listed on the right side 
um, and are selected by the user based on those that were previously created. The final risk is then assessed based on the grades that are defined inside the risk matrix. For example, if an asset has high likelihood of failure and high consequence of failure, I'm classifying the risk as high, but of course this can be changed and defined by the user. After calculating the risk, the final step is to define an action plan. Uh, here is where we define the actions to be taking, taken based on integrated analysis between risk and performance. The plan is built also based on the decision tree method. So let's look, for example, at this specific one here. In this example, for example, um, I'm defining that I want to replace all the pipes that were classified with high risk, but also, that the, but also those that were classified with medium risk and have high level of uh, water losses. Uh, 